We're always looking for social entrepreneurs, you know, people who are able to solve the issues that they have in their communities and general issues that we have as a country. So if somebody was to ask me today, what must I do? I'd say, look around you, read the newspapers. There's many things around us that influences, you know, what sort of businesses we want to start, which will become profitable because the more you do things that will benefit the community and people can participate in it, the better the, the, the chances of making more money out of that. You must network right, you must have good strategic partners, you must know when to negotiate and with whom, you must be able to identify your niche. You know, women are mostly breadwinners, especially in the context of South Africa and in the, in the province. And they, they normally do things better than men. In terms of contribution of women, if you look at the attention to detail, if you look at the creativity, these women are doing very, very well. And some of the ideas that we pick up when we have sessions like today, where you hear of somebody making doors, I mean, like, people would normally think it's a, it's a guy's thing. And the sort of partnerships they have struck with private sector giants, I mean, who thought women would have so much of courage to go and approach those people? Um, they, because also we are naturalists, you know, you babysit projects such that you want to see it do extremely well like you would with your own child. So it's very important that we start bringing women uh, and ensuring that they participate in the economy. But for me, the most important part, we looked at the Gauteng City Region Observatory report. It shows that men are still doing very well in business. In fact, we still have more men in business than we do with women. So, and the women that are in business, most of them are sitting in informal uh, businesses. So it's very important that we try and balance this equation out or try and get as much women as possible to participate in the economy because really we need them. The strength of the countries um, and the success of most of these businesses, it's because they're owned by women. I have embarked on the, on the, on the medical tourism because I've got two hospitals adjacent to my guest house. That is Tembisa Hospital. And they train lots of doctors there. And the doctors normally, you know, book at my place. Secondly, there's a new private hospital, Lenmet. It's also just 200 meters from the hospital, from my, my guest house, you can walk there. Um, I've spoken to the doctors there. I invited them for, for breakfast to come and see the guest house. So whenever they have got patients from wherever, any country, Africa, for an example, if people are coming from Kenya, they come for, for an operation. So they come to the hospital, that landmark hospital, the doctor will admit the patient. Maybe the patient uh, goes for operation, maybe laparotomy, and uh, after the patient is discharged because the, the people don't like staying in the hospital for a long time. You know, after operation, and it's quite expensive to stay in the hospital. So what they do, they discharge them, they come to my guest house, and I'm a nurse anyway by profession. So I can take care of those, those, those uh, uh, patients at my guest house. Whenever there's crisis, I just call the doctor to come and see the patient. After seven days, this patient goes for, you know, checkup or removal of switches. They, 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 they go back to the hospital instead of going back to their countries. It, it has increased the, the turnover by 15%. And I have also, you know, employed, you know, three extra staff members, you know. So job creation, it really helped. Mm -hmm.